speed. It's one of those things that I get asked about all the time. How do I speed clips up in DaVinci Resolve? How do I slow them down? How do I get that buttery, smooth, slow-mo look that I see in some of my favorite creators' videos? Today, I want to talk to you about a couple of things you really need to pay attention to before you ever think about changing the speed of your video clip so that you'll get the end result that you want. I've got a bunch of clips in this project that I've downloaded from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. One thing that I really like about Storyblocks is that they offer unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Once you're signed up and signed in, you can download as many different video clips, audio effects, images, music, and even DaVinci Resolve templates and transitions. But what's great is that not only do they offer high quality, super slow motion video clips ready for you to use right now, they also allow you to filter your video searches by things like resolution and frame rate and duration of each clip so that you can find exactly what you need for your next project if you plan on changing the speed of that clip once it's in your project. I'll leave a link down below so that you can check out Storyblocks yourself if you're interested. Let me grab a couple and bring them down into my timeline. The first one is a girl at the beach spinning around in circles while holding the camera, and the second one is another girl with a fixed camera and she's sort of moving around mugging for that camera playing with her hair. Good hair, by the way. Now on the surface, you would think that these two clips are very similar, but if you were trying to change the speed of each of these clips, you're gonna find that you get very different results when you start using some of DaVinci Resolve's features and applying them to these video clips because of how these clips were filmed. And I want to explain that in a way so that when you work on your next project, all of this makes sense and you'll know how to bring better ingredients to get the kind of results you're looking for. One of the first things you can do in any project when you have assets in that timeline is you can actually select that, go up to the inspector and choose file and learn a little bit more about that particular video footage. I know that the video codec is Apple ProRes, which is a high quality codec but the frame rate is 24 frames per second and it was only filmed at 1080p. I say only because I'm kind of a 4K snob. I like to film everything at 4K. When I go to the second clip, if I select that and go up to the upper right file inspector, I'll see that the codec is slightly different. This is an H.264, but it was filmed at 60 frames per second and it's filmed at UHD, 3840 by 2160, often what some people refer to as 4K, even though it's actually UHD, Ultra HD. The big difference here is how these two pieces of footage were filmed. And let me show you how DaVinci Resolve reacts to these two different pieces of very similar footage when I try to apply features that we would commonly use for speeding up or slowing down that footage. When I go to that first piece of footage and select that, there are a lot of different ways to modify the speed of that clip. I could go up to the video tab of the inspector, I could scroll down to speed change, and I could decide to either speed up or slow down that clip by just grabbing that wheel and moving it however I want it. But one of my favorite ways to have more control of the speed of a clip in DaVinci Resolve is to actually right click on it and choose the retime controls. Choose that, and now what I can do is if I put my mouse on the upper right of that clip, I can actually drag that left or right. I'm not removing frames. I'm changing the overall speed of that clip. And if you look down below, you will see the speed of that clip. It's 81% of the original speed. Here it's sped up to 149. If I come back here, when I move faster, it looks a little better. Why? It looks the way your brain would normally speed something up. Slow down, you start to see a lot of the jitter. It starts to look really choppy. You can actually almost see each individual frame as they go by. One of the things that I'm noticing right away is for each frame, when I move frame by frame through this, not all of the footage is really crisp. Because this was filmed at 24 frames per second, more cinematic, the way your eye would see things, there's going to be more motion blur in the footage. The best way I can describe this is look at me right now. Turn your head really quick left or right. When you did that, I guarantee what you were looking at started to blur out. There was blur, motion blur that happened when your head turned. The reason a lot of people film at 24 frames per second is they like their footage to look the way people would see it in real life. 
That's great if you don't plan on changing the speed of your footage, but if you do, 24 frames per second when you film it can be problematic, especially if you're going to try to slow it down. And DaVinci Resolve actually has a feature that when something feels a little choppy, it can help add frames in between to smooth out that slowed down footage. If I go to the upper right inspector and I scroll down to retime and scaling, let's choose the retime process called optical flow. That's going to help smooth out that slow motion footage. And we can even change the motion estimation to enhanced better. Now at the bottom under resize filter, let's change that to smoother. Most people when they slow down footage want to make that footage a little smoother. And what DaVinci Resolve is going to do is approximate some frames that might be missing in between these choppy frames to try to make this footage look smoother. Now when I click that and apply it, if I go back, that helped the footage out, but it didn't make it completely smooth. There's still a bit of a jumpy factor to it. Now if I take this other piece of footage, this one here that was filmed at 60 frames per second at UHD or 4K, and I grab that piece of footage, and let me right click and choose the retime controls again. If I slow it down quite a bit, even to 50%, you'll see how good this footage still looks. The main reason for that is there are more frames at 60 frames per second that it was filmed at for the software to work with. It can take each frame, slow it down, and if it's slowed down even in half, it's still going to be 30 frames per second because half of 60 frames slowed down to 50% is 30 frames per second. And all of these frames are really crisp. Because it was filmed at 60 frames per second, there's less motion blur in the footage itself before we bring it into your project. That can make a huge difference. If I want to do something that's really super slow-mo, I'm going to go for a higher frame rate when I film it or when I find that video from an asset house that I might be licensing it from, like Storyblocks. I want to find footage that has higher frame rate so it does what I want, less motion blur in the actual footage. I can stretch that out to 29% of its original speed. And when I play it back, it's slightly choppy, but it's crisp. So when I choose that footage and go up to the inspector and use the retime and scaling, you'll see this footage actually looks really good. Really crisp, really smooth when I've slowed it way, way down, 29%. See how smooth she looks and how good the slow motion looks? That's because the original footage was filmed at a higher frame rate and it's going to react to these retime controls better if my goal is to slow it down. If you want to learn more about how to edit your YouTube videos using DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below.